Welcome students, in this class we will be learning about differentiation of hyperbolic functions. Now when we talk about differentiation, the term differentiation is nothing but we are interested in finding the rate of change. And this is the situation if the given function involved is hyperbolic in nature. So suppose you have say y is equal to shin x and you wanted to know what would happen to this function if the function happens to undergo a certain rate of change. So we are expected to find the derivative. So this is the all important uh, word derivative. When we talk about derivative, derivative directly means change, rate of change. So I have just mentioned it over here. So we are actually trying to find out what happens when y is subjected to a certain rate of change. So we call it as dy over dx. So when that happens, the function y is equal to shin x changes to cos x. And that is the final solution. If someone were to ask you, given that y is equal to shin x, what happens if you were to take a derivative of shin x, then the solution is cos x. Okay, now having mentioned to you this, if someone is asking you, how do you know? How? How do you know when you when you take the derivative of shin x, you're getting cos x? Right, that's a valid question. How is a valid question? As uh, students of mathematics, we are expected to answer these uh, hows. Now, we know that y is equal to shin x, but we also know that uh, shin x has a representation as e raised to the power of x, negative e raised to the power of negative x over 2. Take that and you substitute it here. So, y is equal to e raised to the power of x, negative e raised to the power of negative x over 2. Now, we are expected to find dy over dx, right? So, we differentiate. We differentiate both sides. So, this is going to be dy over dx. Now, 1 over 2 is a constant. You can take that 1 over 2 out and you differentiate e raised to the power of x. Differentiation of e raised to the power of x is e raised to the power of x multiplied with the differentiation of x which is 1 followed by differentiation of e raised to the power of negative x is going to be e raised to the power of negative x multiplied with the differentiation of negative x which is negative 1. So, this is what we have got. Now, this can be further rewritten as of course, 1 over 2 is here and you got e raised to the power of x. Negative negative will be positive and you got e raised to the power of negative x. This can be rewritten as e raised to the power of x positive e raised to the power of negative x divided by 2 which is nothing but cos x. So therefore we have shown that if you are being given y is equal to shin x and you are expected to find the derivative of this function then this function would change to be uh, to become cos x. So that is the all important uh, proof that you will have to know. Now similarly you are given y is equal to say cos x. What would happen if you were to subject this function y is equal to cos x to a change, to a rate of change and the variable in concern is x with reference to x. If this function were to change then we would get dy over dx to be equal to shin x. Now remember in circular function if y is equal to cos x then the derivative of this would give us negative sin x. But in case of hyperbolic function the derivative is directly giving shin x. Now again we are encountering the question how? How do you know? When you differentiate y is equal to cos x you are getting shin x. So for that let us consider y is equal to cos x. Okay, now we know that uh, cos x is equal to e raised to the power of x positive e raised to the power of negative x divided by 2. Substitute that. So, because of that substitution, this is going to be y is equal to e raised to the power of x positive e raised to the power of negative x divided by 2. Now, differentiating both sides, we get. So, what do you get when you differentiate both sides? The differentiation is going to be dy over dx. 1 over 2 is a constant. You differentiate e raised to the power of x, you get e raised to, to the power of x. Multiply with the differential of x, that's 1. 
positive differentiation of e raised to the power of negative x will give you e raised to the power of negative x multiplied with the differentiation of negative x will give you negative 1 this can be rewritten as 1 over 2 times e raised to the power of x negative into positive will be negative followed by e raised to the power of negative x this is nothing but e raised to the power of x negative e raised to the power of negative x divided by 2 which is nothing but shin x so therefore you have dy over dx to be equal to shin x so this is an all important result and the proof of this result is also given here okay so let's move on and now we got the next question if you are given y is equal to hyperbolic tan we are expected to find dy over dx now we know that hyperbolic tan x can be rewritten as shin x divided by cos x and we also know that when you differentiate uh, shin x you can also write the derivative like this you will get cos x and when you differentiate cos x you will get shin x so these two are just being shown right in the previous part of the lesson now I am going to start with consider consider y is equal to hyperbolic tan x so I am going to rewrite this as shin x over cos x now differentiating both sides we get so what do we get when you differentiate both sides for this you get dy over dx now I would be using u over v formula which is nothing but v times u dash minus u times v dash divided by v squared this is the all important formula so by that formula you would get cos x multiplied with differential of shin x is cos x you have a negative sign followed by shin x differential of cos x is shin x divided by cos x the whole square cos x into cos x is giving us cos squared x shin x into shin x is giving us shin squared x divided by cos squared x now we know that cos square x by the trigonometric identity I, I should say by the hyperbolic identity we have seen that cos square x negative shin square x is equal to 1 I uh, proved this so this is equal to 1 over cos square x but 1 over cos x is equal to secant x I have also given the formula in the previous video lesson please refer that so this is nothing but 1 over cos x whole square but 1 over cos x is secant x so if I were to rewrite this as 1 over cos x whole squared like that in place of 1 over cos x I can simply write it as secant x right 1 over cos x is secant x and that is raised to the power of 2 this can be further rewritten as secant squared x so therefore what have we got if y is equal to hyperbolic tan x then dy over dx is going to be secant squared x so this is the all important deduction that we will have to know ok we are expected to find dy over dx given that y is equal to secant x I am going to rewrite this as 1 over cos x and then I will be utilizing u over v formula which is nothing but v times u dash minus u times v dash divided by v squared so differentiating both sides we get so what do we get this is dy over dx is equal to cos x multiplied with the differentiation of 1 which is 0 followed by a negative sign and 1 differentiation of cos x is shin x divided by cos x all squared this will vanish so this is equal to negative of shin x over cos squared x which can be rewritten as shin x over cos x multiplied with 1 over cos x shin x over cos x is hyperbolic tan with a negative sign 1 over cos is uh, hyperbolic secant or secant x this can be further rewritten as secant x hyperbolic tan x with a negative sign now what is this this is dy over dx given that y is equal to secant x so you have y is equal to secant x if you were to differentiate it you would get negative secant x multiplied with hyperbolic tan or tan x okay so this is a very important formula now having got that secant x let me move to the next question okay this is the next question y is equal to cosecant x we are expected to find 
dy over dx. Now I'm going to consider y is equal to cosecant x and then I'm going to rewrite cosecant x as 1 over shin x then I'm going to utilize d over uh, d of u over v formula which is v times u dash minus u times v dash over v squared this is going to be equal to shin x differentiating both sides you can state that differentiating both sides we get so what do we get this is dy over dx is equal to shin x multiplied with derivative of 1 0 1 multiplied with derivative of shin x is cos x divided by shin x raised to the power of 2. This vanishes giving me negative cos x divided by shin square x. Now I can rewrite this as negative cos x over shin x multiplied with 1 over shin x. Now cos x over shin x that's nothing but cot hyperbolic cortex with a negative sign multiplied with 1 over shin x that's going to be Cosecant squared, cosecant x. Now I can rewrite this as negative hyperbolic cosecant x multiplied with hyperbolic cot x. So this is the formula dy over dx which we got when y is equal to cosecant x. Okay, so this is my dy over dx. So having given you this, let me move on to the next question what happens when y is equal to cortex so given given y is equal to hyperbolic cot x we are expected to find dy over dx now i'm going to start off by stating consider this is how you need to go if they are asking you a question like that given they are asking you to get the derivative then you need to start like this consider y to be equal to hyperbolic cot x now since we know that wkt stands for we know that hyperbolic cot x is equal to cos x divided by shin x if i were to take this as one so therefore one can be rewritten as y is equal to cos x over shin x now differentiating both sides we get so what do we get on the left you get dy over dx on the right we are going to apply d of u over v formula which is nothing but v times u dash minus u times v dash divided by v squared so this is shin x multiplied with the derivative of cosh is going to be shin x with the followed by a negative sign and a cosh x multiplied with the derivative of shin x which is going to be cosh x divided by you have shin x that is raised to the power of 2 shin x into shin x is uh, shin squared x negative cos x into cos x is cos squared x divided by shin squared x but we do not have a formula like this shin squared x negative cos squared x however we have a formula if I were to take the negative sign out I would get cos squared x negative shin squared x divided by shin squared x we got a formula okay since we know that cos squared x negative shin squared x is equal to 1 applying that formula this is going to give me negative 1 over shin squared x but I can actually rewrite negative 1 over shin squared x as 1 over shin x whole squared with a negative sign outside but we know that so what do we know 1 over shin x is cosecant x so if I were to substitute that that's going to be negative of plus cosecant x you have a square there that's going to be negative cosecant squared x so that's a beautiful formula so what is the outcome if y is equal to hyperbolic cot x then dy over dx is equal to negative cosecant squared x so i have given you the vital derivatives now we will move on to do some advanced questions. Now we got a question. We are expected to find the derivative of y is equal to shin x times cos x. Now we got two product of, uh, I would say, two functions product. Two of them are hyperbolic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize uv, product formula, which is nothing but u times v dash, positive v times u dash. So let me utilize that formula. So this is going to be differentiating both sides. You can write that both sides we get. So what do we get? This is going to be dy over dx is equal to 
shin x multiplied with the differential of cos x that's going to be shin x positive cos x multiplied with the derivative of shin x that's going to be cos x now shin x into shin x is uh, shin squared x cos x into cos x is uh, cos squared x and that's it you don't have to do anything else so this is the derivative dy over dx now if you want this can be completely converted into either shin or cos right now we know that cos squared x negative uh, shin squared x is equal to 1 and uh, cos squared x is equal to 1 positive shin squared x so if I were to take and place in place of cos squared x I were to place 1 positive shin squared x this is going to be shin squared x positive 1 positive shin squared x which is going to be equal to shin squared x positive shin squared x is going to be 2 times shin squared x positive 1 so this is one result right but they are not particular about uh, producing a result they just want us to find dy over dx so this is the completion for this question so this is question number one now let me move on to do the next question so we are given y is equal to hyperbolic tan x divided by secant x we are expected to find dy over dx now you can convert this into shin and cos that's the best thing this is going to be shin x over cos x divided by 1 over cos x you flip this this is going to be shin x divided by cos x multiplied with cos x cos x cos x gets cancelled giving you shin x so you only have y is equal to shin x and you are expected to find dy over dx so differentiating both sides we get so what do we get dy over dx differentiation of shin x is going to be cos x so that is the end of the solution for this particular question okay so we have got that now I'm going to use or I would say uh, I'm going to allocate one particular lesson on chain rule and another particular lesson on implicit differentiation so I'm not going to handle uh, implicit differentiation and chain rule in this class so moving on this is the next question so this is a question and uh, we got another question and this question is going to be we are given y is equal to x to the power of 3 cos x we expected to find dy over dx so I'm going to be using this particular rule that is d of u times v is equal to u times v dash positive v times u dash so differentiating both sides we get so what do we get when you differentiate you get dy over dx is equal to x to the power of 3 differential of cos is going to be shin x positive cos x times the differentiation of x power 3 is 3 times x squared so this can be rewritten as x power 3 shin x positive 3 times x squared times cos x if you were to take x squared out you get x times shin x positive 3 times cos x this is dy over dx so that is the end of the solution for this question okay so one more thing I want to do, one more question I want to do. This is going to be a mixed question. That means given that y is equal to sin x times shin x positive cos x times cos x. This is a mixed function. Okay, they are asking us to find dy over dx. So differentiating both sides, you can write that differentiating both sides we get. So what do we get when we differentiate? This is going to be dy over dx is equal to sin x multiplied with differentiation of shin x. That's going to be cos x positive shin x times uh, differentiation of sin x. That's going to be cos x positive cos x times differentiation of cos x. That's going to be shin x positive cos x times differentiation of cos x is going to be negative sin x. So if you were to rewrite this, you would get sin x cos x is there any cos x common okay I have a cos x here so what I'm going to do 
I'm going to take cosh x out and uh, I will get a sin x negative sin x. Okay. Then I can take a uh, shin x out positive. If I were to take shin x out, I would get cos x plus cos x. So this vanishes. Cos x plus cos x. This is going to give me two cos x. So I can rewrite the solution as two times cos x times shin x. So this is my dy over dx. This is a lovely result, right? Welcome students. In this class, we will learn hyperbolic differentiation by applying chain rule. Now we got the first question: y is equal to shin of 3x. Now when you want to apply the chain rule, the chain rule is actually differentiating the quantity multiple times so that all of the variables are exhausted. So that is actually resonant to the chain that you see in real life. So you need to just go on until the parameters or the variables are all exhausted. So in this case, if I am to differentiate this quantity with respect to x, so this is going to be dy is equal to differential of shin x. If I were to have y is equal to shin x, if I were to find dy over dx, differentiation of shin x is going to be cosh x. So this is going to give me cosh of 3x multiplied with the differentiation of 3x. So that would mean I have not only differentiated the hyperbolic function but also the variable that is present inside the hyperbolic function. So this is going to give me cosh 3x, differentiation of 3x is going to be 3 and that in turn has to be multiplied with the differentiation of x. See for example you have a quantity like this u into v. There are two quantities are there. So you start with the first quantity, you differentiate the second quantity and you start with the second quantity and you differentiate the first quantity. So that's exactly what is happening here. Okay. So why do I only get 3? You might be asking me because if I were to take u is equal to 3 and v is equal to x, if I were to differentiate u, differential of constant is going to give me 0 and differentiation of x will give me 1. So if I were to apply the formula u into v dash, it's going to be 3 into differentiation of the variable will give me 1 plus v into differentiation of the constant will give me 0. So all I get is only 3. Right? So that's the reason I'm just placing 3. Now, since we are actually taking the differentiation with reference to x, we need to also place the differential operator dx. If you do not want to place the differential operator dx there, you can simply outrightly start with dy over dx and write the differentiation. So I will be utilizing this, fo this format or this fashion. Just outrightly start with differentiating the quantity. So having given you this, let me just move on. As we progress, you will be in a better position to understand the differentiation of the chain rule. So you got the next question. Y is equal to cosh of x squared positive 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find dy over dx. So you differentiate cosh, you get shin. The variable inside is x squared positive 1. Then you will have to differentiate this quantity. So differentiation of that is going to be 2 times x. Differential of 1 is going to be 0. So this is rewritten as 2 times x shin of x squared positive 1. What is this? This is nothing but dy over dx. Now this is question number 2. Question number 3. Suppose you have y is equal to cosh of root of x. Now you are expected to find dy over dx. Differentiation of cosh is going to be shin of root of x multiplied with the differentiation of root of x. Now for questions like this, it's better that you use the rough side of the page. So we are expected to differentiate root of x. This is nothing but d of x raised to the power of 1 over 2. Next you differentiate this 
differential of uh, x raised to the power 1 over 2 is going to be 1 over 2 times x raised to the power of 1 over 2 negative 1 which is going to be 1 over 2 times x raised to the power of negative 1 over 2 which can be rewritten as you can push this down so it's going to be root of x and of course you can place the differential operator but in this case I am placing the differential operator over here since I am outrightly starting it as dy over dx so this is going to be equal to shin of root of x multiplied with the differentiation of this which is going to be 1 over 2 times root of x which can be rewritten as shin of root x divided by 2 times root of x so this is my dy over dx so that is merely the application of chain rule now what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to be utilizing uh, or I will be doing the next question so let me go on to do that so this is the next question you have been asked to differentiate uh, tan x hyperbolic tan and shin now we will be applying d of u into v which is going to be u times v dash positive v times u dash v dash stands for differentiation of v u dash stands for differentiation of u so dy over dx is going to be equal to u times so tan x times differentiation of shin x positive shin x times differentiation of tan x hyperbolic tan now you will have to know what is the differentiation of uh, hyperbolic tan x this is nothing but shin x divided by cos x now this is u over v formula so this is going to be cos x times the differentiation of shin x negative shin x differentiation of cos x divided by cos x the whole square this is going to be cos squared x so this is going to be cos x times differentiation of shin x will give me cos x and differentiation of cos x will give me shin x so I got a shin x and a shin x divided by cos squared x so cos x and cos x this is going to give me cos squared x shin x and shin x is going to give me shin squared x divided by cos squared x so cos squared x negative shin squared x is 1 divided by cos squared x now 1 over cos squared x is nothing but secant squared x so I did all this thing just to show you that the differentiation of hyperbolic tan will give me secant squared x so just place in the derivatives this is going to give me hyperbolic tan times differentiation of shin x is going to be cos x plus shin x differentiation of tan x is going to be secant squared x so this is the solution for this question however if you want to reduce you can reduce this how do I reduce this now tan x hyperbolic tan x is shin x divided by cos x you have a cos x there place the cos x positive now this is shin x multiplied with secant squared x is 1 over cos squared x so I think uh, it's not going to make much of a difference so we can simply stop here this can be the right place for us to stop as the solution for this question we will move on to the next so question number 5 I am differentiating both sides differentiating with respect to x so when you differentiate that you are going to apply dy over dx formula so it is going to be e of x times differential of shin x positive shin x times differentiation of e raised to power of x this is e raised to power of x differentiation of shin x will give you cos x multiplied with shin x I uh, should say added with shin x times differentiation of e raised to the power of x will give me e raised to the power of x this can be rewritten by taking e raised to the power of x out and that's going to be cos x positive shin x this is going to be my dy over dx okay so that is a solution we are expected to find dy over dx so I will be rewriting this as y is equal to hyperbolic tan x cubed raised to the power of 1 over 2 now dy over dx is equal to bring this 1 over 2 down so this is going to be 1 over 2 times tan of x cubed raised to the power of 1 over 2 negative 1 multiplied with the differentiation of uh, this entire quantity tan x cubed so differentiation of tan x cubed is going to be secant squared of x cubed multiplied with the differentiation of x cubed that is going to give me 3 times x squared so you need to do all of this this can be further rewritten as 3 over 2 is a constant 
you can actually place x squared there and you can move this this is 1 over 2 negative 1 that's going to be negative 1 over 2 so that's going to be tan x cubed of 1 over 2 multiplied with secant squared of x cubed now I can further rewrite this as using the formula there is a formula which states that secant let me write it in hyperbolic secant squared x added with tan squared x will give me 1 so therefore secant squared x is equal to 1 negative hyperbolic tan squared x so if you were to substitute that this is equal to I will just place this 3 over 2 x to the power of 2 and multiplied with 1 negative hyperbolic tan squared x cubed should be there right x cubed divided by this is going to be root of hyperbolic tan x cubed so that is my dy over dx so dy over dx is equal to this so you need to get all of this to be certified as a correct solution so we'll move to the next question we got the next question we are expected to differentiate y is equal to shin square x and what is dy over dx is going to be equal to differentiation of shin x starts with 2 times of shin x raised to the power of 2 negative 1 you got to place the x multiplied with the differentiation of shin x that is going to be cos x so therefore my dy over dx is going to be equal to 2 times shin x cos x so that's going to be the solution and this is nothing but shin to x now this is a very important identity have that in mind now we will see differentiating hyperbolic functions involving logs so the first question is if you are given y is equal to ln of shin x how would you find dy over dx so if I were to differentiate this would give me dy over dx is equal to now ln of a quantity if you differentiate you get 1 divided by that quantity so this is, is going to be 1 over shin x multiplied with the differentiation of shin x so what is the differentiation of shin x that's going to be cos x over shin x which can be rewritten as hyperbolic cortex so this is the solution for this question so let me proceed to the next one so this is question number one under hyperbolic differentiation involving logs suppose y is equal to ln of hyperbolic tan you differentiate you get dy over dx is equal to 1 over hyperbolic tan multiplied with the differentiation of the tan x differentiating tan x gives me secant squared x over hyperbolic tan x now this can be rewritten as 1 over cos squared x now tan x is shin x over cos x so you flip it you get cos x over shin x a cos and a cos gets cancelled so this is going to be 1 over cos x multiplied with shin x I can rewrite this as 1 over shin x multiplied with 1 over cos x 1 over shin x is cosecant x and 1 over cos x is secant x so this is dy over dx when we have our y to be ln of hyperbolic tan so that is the second question now next question let me do this y is given to be as ln of shin of x squared so how do you differentiate this dy over dx is equal to as usual it's going to be 1 over shin of x squared next differentiation of shin that's going to be cos of x squared next differentiation of x squared that's going to be 2x so if you were to rewrite this is going to be 2x times cos x squared over shin x squared okay so this is actually you can write it like this cos x squared shin x squared but this is nothing but 2x times cot right hyperbolic cot x squared 
So that is my dy over dx. Okay, so that's the question. We move on to the next one. Now this is an interesting question. We are expected to differentiate ln of cos squared x negative sin squared x. Now, please do not start off outrightly differentiating this quantity because we know that cos squared x negative sin squared x is equal to one. So this can be rewritten as y is equal to ln of one. But we know that ln of one is equal to zero. So that means y is equal to zero, which in turn means dy over dx is equal to zero. So that should be placed. That is the solution for this question. Students, so now we are going to scale up. This is a topic which will deal with complex hyperbolic functions. We will learn how to differentiate them. That's important, right? In all of the application questions, you will encounter complex hyperbolic functions also. When I talk about or when I mention complex, I mean the combination of uh, different types of hyperbolic functions. So in this case, you have an hyperbolic function with an exponential function, right? So how do we differentiate? In all of these differentiation, we need to use this formula, u times v dash positive v times u dash. So I'm differentiating and getting dy over dx. So this is going to be shin x times differentiation of e raised to the power of x squared times chain rule, differentiate x squared. That's going to be two times x. Positive e raised to the power of x squared times differentiation of shin x is going to be cos x. If we were to rewrite this, it can be rewritten as e raised to the power of x squared out two times x or two x times uh, shin x positive cos x. So this is my dy over dx. Okay, so having got that, let me move on to the next question. Say you got this is uh, question two. Question one, you have got ln of cos x positive shin x. So you're differentiating. As I mentioned to you, this is going to be one over the quantity cos x positive shin x. Next, you have to differentiate the entire quantity within inside the logarithm. So this is going to be differentiation of cos x positive shin x. So this can be rewritten as differentiation of cos x will give me shin x. Differentiation of shin x will give me cos x. And you have cos x plus shin x. So this can be rewritten as shin x plus cos x. Now what happens here? Cos x plus, uh, or I would say shin x plus cos x and shin x plus cos x is cancelled giving me 1. So therefore dy over dx is equal to 1. So many times complex functions like this will have a derivative like this. So that's the beauty of uh, mathematics. So next question, question number 3. Let me move on to question number 3. If you have been given say y is equal to hyperbolic tan of root of x multiplied with a trigonometric function sin x. So dy over dx is equal to u into v dash. So tan of root of x multiplied with the differential of sin x that's going to give me cos x plus sin x into multiplied with the differentiation of tan x. Differentiating tan x will give me secant squared of root x multiplied with the differentiation of root x. Now root x is nothing but x raised to the power of 1 over 2. You want to find the derivative of this is going to be 1 over 2 times x raised to the power of negative 1 over 2. So place that 1 over 2 times x raised to the power of negative 1 over 2. This can be further rewritten as cos x times uh, tan tan x plus sin x multiplied with Shikin square of root x divided by 2 times, you bring this down, this is going to be root of x. So that is going to be my dy over dx. So that is a lovely question, lovely question because we have encountered root of x. So having given you that, let me move on to the next one. So you expected to find dy over dx. I'm going to use uv formula. So x to the power of 3 times. Differentiation of cosh is going to give me shin of x squared negative 1 times differentiating x squared. That's going to give me 2x. Differentiation of 1 is going to be 0. So don't worry about it. Plus cosh of x squared negative 1 times differentiation of x cubed is going to give me 3 times x squared. So you rewrite this 
2 times x into x cubed is x to the power of 4 multiplied with shin of x squared negative 1 positive 3 times x squared times cosh of x squared negative 1. If you want, you can take uh, x squared out and write it, but it doesn't matter. I will stop your dy over dx. So that is going to be my final solution. Now probably I will do one more question. We have got y to be equal to shin x divided by ln x positive x. We expected to find dy over dx. So therefore, dy over dx. I'm going to use u over v formula. d of u over v is equal to v times u dash minus u times v dash divided by v squared. That's a formula. So this is equal to ln x positive x times differentiation of shin x. That's going to be cos x negative shin x times differentiation of the denominator. That's going to give me 1 over x plus differentiation of x is going to give me 1 divided by ln x positive x whole squared. Now, if you want, you can rewrite this, but uh, I think uh, probably okay. So let me rewrite this as ln x positive x times uh, cosh x negative 1 over x times shin x. So I can rewrite this as uh, shin x over x negative shin x and uh, that is pre-multiplied by, let me use the space here, 1 over ln x plus x whole squared. So that is what we have got. If you want, you can take this inside and rewrite it again. But uh, I think uh, this is the right place for us to stop. Students, now we are gravitating towards learning how to differentiate inverse hyperbolic functions. Now there are a few formulas you got to know. The first one is differentiating shin inverse of x will give you 1 over root of x squared positive 1. And the question is, how do we know the differentiation of shin inverse of x is equal to 1 over root of x squared positive 1? So for that, let me show you the proof. So I'm going to take, let y be equal to shin inverse of x. So this would mean I move the shin inverse to the other side, I get shin y is equal to x. I differentiate both sides. This is going to give me cosh y and the differentiation of y is going to be dy over dx. The differentiation of x is going to be equal to 1. So therefore dy over dx is equal to 1 over cosh y. But there is a formula. What is the formula? Cosh squared y negative shin squared y is equal to 1. This means cosh squared y is equal to 1 added with shin squared y. This in turn means cos y is equal to root of 1 positive shin squared y. This in turn means 1 positive shin y is x. So it's going to be 1 positive x squared. That's my cos y. So take this value and substitute here. If I were to take this as 2, therefore I get dy over dx to be equal to 1 over root of 1 positive x squared. Okay, this is my y. But what is y? What is y? y is nothing but shin inverse of x, which is equal to 1 over root of 1 positive x squared. So that is the solution for this question. It's a beautiful question. Students were expected to differentiate cosh inverse of x. And we have a formula that differentiation of cosh inverse of x is equal to 1 over root of x squared negative 1. Now the most important question is how do we know that when you differentiate cos inverse of x, you're getting 1 over root of x squared negative 1. So this is an important point, right? I'm going to prove that. So foremost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let y be equal to cos inverse of x. You move this cos inverse to the other side. So this would give me cos y is equal to x. Now differentiate both sides. Differentiation of cos y is going to be shin y times derivative of y, that's dy over dx. Differentiating x would give me 1. So therefore, you got dy over dx is equal to 1 divided by shin y. But what is shin y? Now we know that cos squared y negative shin squared y is equal to 1. We need shin. So move this 1 to this end. So that would give us cos squared y negative 1 is equal to shin squared y. But we need only shin. So therefore, shin y is equal to root of cos squared y negative 1. But what is cos y? Cos y is equal to x. So this is going to be root of 
x square negative 1. So my shin y is root of x square negative 1. So take this value and substitute it here. So if I were to take this as 2, so therefore 2 can be rewritten as dy over dx is equal to 1 over root of x squared negative 1. But what is y? y is nothing but cos inverse of x. So this in turn would be I have now d over dx of cos inverse of x is equal to 1 over root of x squared negative 1 which is the required formula hence proved. Let's move on students. Now we got the next question. We are expected to show that differentiation of hyperbolic tan inverse of x is equal to 1 over 1 negative x squared. Now we need to prove this. So foremost what I'm going to do is I'm going to take let y be equal to hyperbolic tan inverse of x. I flip this tan inverse to the other side. This is going to give me tan y is equal to x. Hyperbolic tan y is equal to x. You differentiate both sides. Differentiation of hyperbolic tan y gives me secant squared y multiplied by the derivative of y dy over dx. Differentiating x gives me 1. So retain dy over dx on the side and move secant squared y to the right. So this is going to give me 1 over secant squared y. But we know a formula. What is the formula we know? Secant squared y plus hyperbolic tan squared y is equal to 1 and secant squared y is equal to 1 negative hyperbolic tan squared y and take in place of this substitute this so this is going to be dy over dx is equal to 1 over 1 negative hyperbolic tan squared y but what is my tan y hyperbolic tan y is equal to x take this value substitute it here so dy over dx is equal to 1 over 1 negative x squared but we know that what do we know my y is equal to tan inverse of x, hyperbolic tan inverse of x. So tan inverse of x. So substitute that. This means d over dx of hyperbolic tan inverse of x is equal to 1 over 1 negative x squared with the condition that x is less than 1. That is the proof for this formula. So having given you this, let me move on. Now question number 4. Differentiating hyperbolic cot inverse of x will also give me 1 over 1 negative x squared and the proof is very much similar to this uh, quantity that we have done here and the only thing is that in this case uh, actually we have x to be greater than 1 okay the condition is x is greater than 1 over here students we are expected to show d over dx of secant inverse of x is equal to negative 1 over x times root of 1 negative x squared. Now this can be a little bit challenging. Now foremost what I want to do is I want to take y to be equal to secant inverse of x. Now move this secant you get this to be as secant of y is equal to x. Now we know that secant x or secant y is rewritten as 1 over cos y. So I'm going to utilize that identity. So this is going to be 1 over cos y. Cos y is equal to x. So rearrange it. If you rearrange it, you get 1 over x is equal to cos y. Now what you need to do is you need to flip this cos to the other side. So this would mean you get y is equal to cos inverse of 1 over x but we know when you differentiate d over dx of cosh inverse of x we get 1 over root of x squared negative 1 right i already did the proof in the previous uh, question now this would mean this is going to be 1 over root of as we have given or as we are aware of the formula, this is going to be 1 over root of 1 over x, the whole square negative 1. Now the root goes all the way down. Okay. Now this has to be multiplied with the derivative of 1 over x. That's going to be negative 1 over x squared. So if we were to rewrite this, this is going to be 1 over root of 1 negative x squared divided by x squared times negative 1 over x squared which is equal to, if you were to flip this, this is going to be root of x squared divided by square root of 1 negative x squared times 1 over x squared with a negative sign. 
Now root of x squared will give me x. There is already a x squared here. So let me place that with a negative sign followed by square root of 1 negative x squared. So uh, x and x can be cancelled giving me negative 1 over x times root of 1 negative x squared. Now what is this? This is the derivative of cosh inverse of 1 over x. But what is this cosh inverse of 1 over x? That's nothing but d over dx of secant inverse of x. So this is a little bit tricky question. So you need to exercise some caution. I mentioned that. Let's move on. Now we will prove differentiation of cosecant inverse of x to be equal to negative 1 over x times the root of x squared positive 1. So foremost let me take y to be equal to cosecant inverse of x. You move this cosecant inverse of x to the left. This would give me cosecant y is equal to x. Now we know that, what do we know? Cosecant y is 1 over shin y. So if we were to substitute this, this is going to be rewritten as 1 over shin y is equal to x. You interchange their position. This means 1 over x is equal to shin y. Now you move this shin to the other side. This would give me shin inverse of 1 over x is equal to y. Now you find dy over dx. Now we know that differentiation of shin x is going to be 1 over root of x squared positive 1 times differentiation of 1 over x. That's going to be negative 1 over x squared. So this can be rewritten as because of the fact you got 1 over x in place of x squared we need to substitute 1 over x. So that's an important fact. So it's going to be 1 over x the whole squared. So you need to extend the square root. So rewriting this, this is negative 1 over x squared multiplied with, I take the LCM, I would get 1 positive x squared divided by x squared. I can rewrite this by flipping. You get negative 1 over x squared times root of x squared divided by root of 1 positive x squared. Root of x squared is going to be x. You have a x squared there. You have a negative sign followed by root of 1 positive x squared. So the square and the x gets cancelled giving you negative 1 over x times root of you can either write it as 1 plus x squared or x squared positive 1 which is equal to the right hand side. Okay. Probably you can just uh, start out by considering using the letter considering or over here you can you can simply say hence the required right this is what is required welcome students in this class we will learn about the expansion of hyperbolic functions now for this purpose we will be utilizing the Maclaurin's theorem now, according to Maclaurin's theorem, this is the definition for the function f of x. If we were to know the expansion of the function f of x at x is equal to 0, then that is given as follows. f of 0 plus x times f dash of 0 plus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared times f dash of 0 plus 1 over 3 factorial times x to the power of 3 times f this is f single dash this is f double dash this is f triple dash of 0 plus etc so this is the series that we will be utilizing now if we were to obtain the expansion of sin x or since we're dealing with hyperbolic functions we would be considering shin x now we will have to find out f of 0. Now shin of 0 is going to be 0. Now find f dash of uh, x. In this case, uh, differentiation of shin x is going to be cosh x. And f dash of 0 is going to be cosh of 0, which is equal to 1. Now find out f double dash of x. That means you have to differentiate this quantity that would give me shin x again. Now f double dash of 0 is going to be shin of 0 which is equal to 0. Now find out f triple dash of x. Differentiation of shin x is going to be cosh x. And f triple dash of 0 is going to be cosh of 0 which is equal to 1. If we were to substitute that in 1, therefore 1 can be rewritten as 
f of x in this case is shin x shin x is equal to f of 0 we do not have f of 0 because f of 0 is 0 so let me just place 0 x over it's actually 1 factorial but 1 factorial is 1 multiplied with f dash of 0 that's going to be 1 there plus x squared f double dash is gone f triple dash is there so it's going to be x to the power of 3 divided by 3 factorial f triple dash of 0 is going to be 1 if i were to extend this this is going to be giving me the next term is going to be x to the power of 5 divided by 5 factorial pass it to x to the power of 7 over 7 factorial plus etc so the expansion for shin x is x positive x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x to the power of 5 over 5 factorial x power 7 over 7 factorial plus etc this is a very important expansion for shin x so having given you this let me move on to cosh now using McLaurin's, i'm going to state the expansion of cosh x cosh x is equal to 1 positive 1 over 2 factorial times x squared positive x to the power of 4 3 will vanish so it's going to be 4 over 4 factorial plus x power 6 over 6 factorial plus etc this is uh, for cosh x now uh, shin x over cosh x that's going to be tan x so let me write the expansion for hyperbolic tan x as follows so that is going to be x negative x to the power of 3 there is no factorial here plus 2 over 15 times x to the power of 5 plus 17 over 315 times x to the power of 7 plus etc so this is for hyperbolic tan x now secant x also has an expansion that's going to be 1 negative x squared divided by 2 positive 5 over 24 x to the power of 4 negative 61 over 720 x to the power of 6 plus etc now cosh x also has an expansion which is um, actually written as follows now in traditional sense cosecant x does not have a McLaurin's expansion so what we do is we actually take the Lorentz series for cosecant x and for practical reasons we approximate the cosecant x expansion to be as follows so 1 over x negative x over 6 positive 7x cubed divided by 360 negative 31x to the power of 5 divided by 15120 plus etc now this is only valid for small x have that in mind so having given you this let me move on now let's see the expansion of anti-functions Suppose we have to obtain the expansion of shin inverse of x. Now shin inverse of x is nothing but 1 over root of 1 positive x squared. We have already studied this, right? Now I want to know the expansion of this. Now this can be rewritten as 1 over 1 positive x squared raised to the power of 1 over 2, which can be further rewritten as 1 positive x squared raised to the power of negative 1 over 2. Now, to get the expansion, we would be utilizing what is called as a binomial expansion or binomial series expansion. Now, this has got a formula which is rewritten as 1 positive x raised to the power of n is equal to 1 positive n times x positive n into n negative 1 divided by 2 factorial multiplied with x squared positive n into n negative 1 times n negative 2 divided by 3 factorial times x to the power of 3 positive etc now we have n to be as negative 1 over 2 and x to be as x squared so substitute that so therefore we now have 1 positive x squared raised to the power of negative 1 over 2 is rewritten as 1 in place of n i'm going to substitute negative 1 over 2 multiplied with x that's going to be x squared here and this is going to be negative so let me calculate n into n negative 1 which is negative 1 over 2 negative 1 over 2 negative 1 which is negative 1 times negative 3 over 2 which is 3 over 4 so this is equal to 
uh, 3 over 4 right so I substitute 3 over 4 there and I have a 2 factorial substitute that and you have x squared x is 1 capital x squared right so that's going to be x raised to the power of 4 so you got a 2 there and that is raised to the power of 2 so that is the next term now moving on n into n negative 1 times n negative 2 so what is that that is going to be negative 1 over 2 this is negative 1 over 2 negative 1 negative 1 over 2 negative 2 so this is this we have already calculated this is going to be 3 over 4 we need to calculate this this is uh, one, you take the LCM you get 4 negative 4 negative 1 negative 5 over 4 uh, negative 5 over 2 right followed by 3 into 5 is 15 you have a negative sign 4 into 2 is 8 so you take this and you substitute it here so you have a negative sign and that's going to be 15 over 3 factorial is 6 6 into 8 is 48 right so you, you have a 48 there but you know what 48 over 15 so I can reduce this right 3 divides your 5 times 3 will divide your 16 times so you have a 3 over 16 there so let me write that as this is uh, 1 over 16 this is uh, 5 this has to be 5 okay so you have negative 5 times over 16 and what is this? This is x squared all raised to the power of 3 plus etc. So all of these things are worked out for your understanding. So if I were to expand this, 1 positive x squared raised to the power of negative 1 over 2, that's going to be equal to 1 negative x squared over 2 positive 3 over 4 into 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2, so 8 x to the power of 4 negative 5 over 16 x to the power of 2 raised to the power of 3 is 6 plus etc so this is the expansion for 1 positive x squared raised to the power of negative 1 over 2 but what exactly is this this is nothing but d over dx of shin inverse of x now we come to the all important part now this is actually d over dx of uh, shin inverse of x which we have got as 1 negative equal over 2 positive 3 over 8 x to the power of 4 negative 5 over 16 x to the power of 6 plus etc but this is not the requirement the requirement is what is the expansion for shin inverse of x okay so how do you get that to get the expansion for shin inverse of x what we need to do is we will integrate both sides integrating integration is the reverse process of differentiation so when you integrate d over dx gets neutralized so thereby we get only shin inverse of x so shin inverse of x so that would mean we need to integrate the right hand side so this is going to be integral of 1 that's going to be x this is going to be x to the power of 3 divided by 3 and this is going to be x to the power of 5 with a 3 there divided by 5 is going to be 40 followed by x to the power of 7 divided by 7 7 6 are 42 4 and you 7 1 are 7 that's going to be 1 1 2 you have a 5 there plus etc so I have that in mind so having given you this expansion I'm going to write down the other C expansions or other uh, series expansions that are involving anti-functions so this is actually valid the convergence is guaranteed convergence of this series is guaranteed for modulus of x less than 1 okay that is uh, additional note so having given you this let me give you the series expansions for now d over dx of cosh inverse of x that is going to be rewritten as it's actually 1 over root of x squared negative 1 now you can try this up this is going to be equal to x squared negative 1 raised to the power of negative 1 over 2 you expand this you will get 1 over x times 1 positive 1 over 2 times 1 over x squared positive 1 over 2 times 
3 over 4 times 1 over x to the power of 4 positive 1 over 2 times 3 over 4 times 5 over 6 times 1 over x to the power of 6 plus etc. So this is the expansion for cos inverse of x. By the same concept demonstrated you can also obtain for tan inverse of x. Now first question can you prove that shin inverse of x is equal to ln of x positive root of 1 positive x squared. Can you prove that? The question is can you? Okay, I'm going to show you how to prove this because this is a little bit challenging. So let me just take y to be equal to shin inverse of x. So move the shin to the other side. This would give me, that is, move the shin inverse to the other side. So this is going to give me shin y is equal to x. So I'm going to rewrite this as x is equal to shin y. Now we know a formula. What is that? We know that shin x is equal to e raised to the power of x negative e raised to the power of negative x divided by 2. So this means I can rewrite shin y to be as e raised to the power of y negative e raised to the power of negative y divided by 2. Fair enough. So in place of shin y, I am going to substitute this. So this is where we stopped, right? I am going to take this as 2. So therefore, I can rewrite 2 to be as x is equal to e raised to the power of y negative e raised to the power of negative y divided by 2. You cross multiply this will give me 2 times x equal to e raised to the power of y negative e raised to the power of negative y. Now this can be further rewritten as 2 times x is equal to e raised to the power of y negative 1 over e raised to the power of y. Right? Now take the LCM. This is going to give me e raised to the power of y. e raised to the power of y times e raised to the power of y is e raised to the power of 2y negative 1. You cross multiply, you get 2 times x times e raised to the power of y is equal to e raised to the power of 2y negative 1. You bring everything to the other side. This is going to give me e raised to the power of 2y negative 2 times x e raised to the power of y and negative 1 is equal to 0. I can rewrite this as e raised to the power of y the whole square negative by the law of indices 2 times x e raised to the power of y negative 1 is equal to 0. Now let me take t to be equal to e raised to the power of y. Therefore, I can rewrite 3 to be as t squared negative 2 times x times t negative 1 is equal to 0. It's a quadratic in t. So this means t is equal to negative b. That's going to be negative 2x plus or minus root of b squared. That's going to be 2x the whole squared. Negative 4 times a is 1 and uh, c is negative 1 divided by 2 times a. So this can be rewritten as 2 times x plus or minus root of 2 times 2x raised to the power of 2 that's going to be 4 times x squared positive 4 divided by 2. 2 I can take it out. So that's going to be x plus or minus root of 4 I can take it out. It will be, become 2 like this. Right? Now uh, so since I've taken the 2 out this 2 will not be there. Okay? So this 2 would have gone out. So that in turn is going to be x squared positive 4 is taken out. So it's going to be 1 there. This is divided by 2. Okay? I hope you are able to follow this. I take 4 out. So it's going to be x squared positive 1. And the 4 comes out. It becomes 2. There is already a 2 there. So we take a 2 out. So it's going to be 2 times of x positive plus or minus root of x squared positive 1 divided by 2. 2, 2 gets cancelled. So you have t to be equal to two roots. What is t? t is nothing but my e raised to the power of y. So e power y is equal to x plus root of x squared positive 1. That is one component. The other component is going to be e raised to the power of y is x negative root of x squared positive 1. Now, we cannot take this. Okay, we have to reject this. Why? Because e raised to the power of y is greater than 0. So this one would contradict the fact that e raised to the power of y is greater than 0. So I drop this. So this is dropped. This alone is there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Let me see if I have some space. Okay. So let me go over here. 
so I have got I have got e raised to the power of y therefore e raised to the power of y is equal to is going to be x plus root of x squared positive 1 right now take ln both sides e raised to the power of y is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared positive 1 now we have from logarithm a raised to the power of b is equal to b times ln a that means y times ln of e is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared positive 1 now we also know that ln of e to the base e is equal to 1 this is already the base e so I get y is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared positive 1 but but what is actually y y is nothing but shin hyperbolic shin inverse of x right shin inverse of x so take the shin inverse of x and substitute here so this means shin inverse of x is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared positive 1 shin inverse is also written as arc shin x also arc shin x is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared positive 1 so this is a very important result involving shin inverse and log okay so there is a connectivity so we have just established a connection we're going to go to the next proof can you show that cosh inverse of x is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1 now shin inverse of x is ln of x positive root of x squared positive 1 now cosh inverse of x we got to show it to be equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1 now how are we going to show that now foremost uh, let me take let y be equal to cosh inverse of x so you move this cosh inverse to the other side you get cosh y is equal to x now we know that cosh x is e raised to the power of x positive e raised to the power of negative x divided by 2 therefore cosh y is e raised to the power of y positive e raised to the power of negative y divided by 2 so therefore I can rewrite 2 to be as e raised to the power of y positive e raised to the power of negative y divided by 2 is equal to x you cross multiply you get e raised to the power of y positive e raised to the power of negative y is equal to 2 times x this can be rewritten as e raised to the power of y positive push this down e raised to the power of y is equal to 2x take the LCM you get e raised to the power of 2y positive 1 divided by e raised to the power of y is equal to 2 times x you cross multiply and you get e raised to the power of 2y positive 1 is equal to 2 times x e raised to the power of y rewriting we now have e raised to the power of 2y negative 2 times x e raised to the power of y positive 1 is equal to 0 this is what we get now this can be rewritten as e raised to the power of y the whole squared negative 2 times x e raised to the power of y positive 1 is equal to 0 this can be rewritten as a quadratic let t be equal to e raised to the power of y so if I were to take this as 3 then I can write 3 to be as t squared negative 2 times x t positive 1 is equal to 0 so t is equal to negative b is going to be positive 2x plus or minus root of 4x squared negative 4 divided by 2 this is going to be I take 2 out so let's get x positive plus or minus 4 comes out that's going to be 2 root of x squared negative 1 and if 2 were to come out this is going to be lost right that 2 will go out you have a divisor by 2 so 2 2 gets cancelled you get t is equal to two values x plus root of x squared negative 1 and x negative root of x squared negative 1 now we drop the negative and we only take t so this means t is equal to x positive root of x squared negative 1 now we are dropping for the fact that e raised to the power of y is greater than 0 so this would mean e raised to the power of y is equal to x positive root of x squared negative 1 so let me I need to go to the next page okay so I now have e raised to the power of y 
is equal to x positive root of x squared negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking ln both sides. So if I were to take ln both sides, this is going to be ln of e raised to the power of y is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1. And I have formula ln a raised to the power of b is equal to b times ln a. This is going to give me y times ln e is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1. Now we know that ln e is equal to 1. So that means y is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1. But what is y? y is nothing but cos inverse of x. So substitute that over here. So this means what we got? We got cos inverse of x is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1, which is the required solution for the question. Students, we got a beautiful question. We are expected to solve this hyperbolic equation and give the answer in natural logs. Now let me start off by stating that consider cos 2x negative 5 times cos x positive 4 is equal to 0. Now we know the formula. What is that? Cos 2x is equal to 2 times cos squared x negative 1. This is a result. I have already proved the result. Please refer that to the notes. Now, if I were to take this as 2, therefore I will substitute this over here. So 2 can be rewritten as, I am going to write this as 2 times cos squared x negative 1, negative 5 times cos x positive 4 is equal to 0. So can I, let me rewrite this as 2 times cos squared x negative 5 times cos x, uh, 4 added with uh, negative 1 will give me a positive 3 is equal to 0. Now this is what I have got. Now what I wish to do is I would want to make some substitution to handle this. So let me do that. Now let me take uh, cos x to be equal to some t. So this is 2 times t squared negative 5t positive 3 is equal to 0, a quadratic in t, so t is equal to negative b, negative b is going to be negative of negative 5, positive 5, plus or minus root of b square 25, negative 4 times a times c, divided by 2 times a, so this is equal to 5, plus or minus root of 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24, 25 minus 24 divided by 4, which is giving us 5 plus root of 1, plus or minus root of 1 divided by 4. So we got two roots, so t1 is equal to 5 plus 1 over 4, and this is giving me 6 over 4, 2 divides here 3 times, 2 divides here 2 times, so therefore t is equal to 3 over 2, which means cos x is equal to 3 over 2. Also, t1 is equal to 5 negative 1 over 4, which means 4 over 4, which means 1. So therefore, t is equal to 1, which means cos x is equal to 1. So if cos x is equal to 1, we have to subsequently obtain the values for cos x is equal to 1 and cos x is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so let me go and get the expansion. Now the expansion that we will be using is this cos inverse is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1. So we know that cos inverse of x is equal to ln of x positive root of x squared negative 1. So therefore cos x is equal to 3 over 2 means x is equal to cos inverse, cos inverse of 3 over 2. In place of x you have 3 over 2. So this means cos inverse of 3 over 2 is equal to ln of 3 over 2 plus root of 3 over 2 whole squared negative 1 which is equal to ln of 3 over 2 9 over 4, negative 1, which means 5 over 4. So this is equal to ln 3 over 2 plus 5 over 4, 
root of 5 over 4 is going to be 2. Now one important part is that since we are dealing with uh, square root, right, we are dealing with square root, we will have to place, we will have to cater to two possible solutions because of the fact that 9 over 4, when you subtract, you get root of 5 over 4, which will have two roots, positive and negative, and both of them have to be placed. Now, why do I say both of them have to be placed? Because of the fact that 3 over 2 is greater than 1. So, that would mean the roots that we get, the two roots that we get will be all right. Will be all right when I say all right, it means it's okay to have them. So we will still have the solution. So having mentioned that, we'll move on. 